everyone, I wanted to show you a quick Apple script I made, a backup program using rsync. So to start off, I'll show you how the script runs real quickly. It initializes the backup and then amounts the volume. It checks your SSID to see if it matches your home network. And if it does match your home network, it proceeds to try to mount the volume where your local network storage is. So now it's going to try to back up the documents. It's comparing all the files in my documents folder with uh, their timestamps and the corresponding documents in the destination folder and updating the files if any have changed. And now it is ending. All right, so that was basically the script. Uh, this program backs up my My Documents folder and my music archive. So right now I have the program opened up in Mac uh, Script Editor, and I'll run through the different components real quickly so you know how to use the program. The first few lines of code set up the uh, progress bar that you saw on the screen, basically saying that there's five steps, and the first one is called initializing. So skipping all this, down here we have a subprogram called Write to File, and every time you call this program Write to File, it's going to write a variable to a line in this file, which you can replace with uh, wherever you want your backup log file. To call this program, you call my, the program name, write to file, and then whatever variable holds the text information you want to write to the file. The true simply means uh, you want write access to the file. So immediately, uh, the progress complete is in incremented to 1, and it ver says verifying SSID. You use this shell script here to get the name of the current wireless network that you're connected to. And then it logs that name in the log right here. So right now it's checking to see if my SSID is equal to this string, and this string is the Wi-Fi name of my home network. The reason for this is that if you have this script running on a schedule, uh, you might be out of the house at the time that it runs and it could get stuck in a loop trying to mount a volume at a network that doesn't actually have your network drive. So this is a simple if statement right at the beginning, and if it is not satisfied, if it's not connected to the right network, it goes right down to the bottom, displays the notification, network verification failed, backup aborted, and it ends the service. So assuming you are connected to the right network, it moves on to mounting the volume. So this line here mounts the volume at this location, using a username and a password that you can enter here. If your volume is not password protected, then you can remove this part of the code. Uh, to actually find this address, uh, you'll need to go to the network, and you'll need to navigate to the network folder that has the, um, that, is, that is your backup location. And then you can uh, enter in this network here. Uh, the IP address could be an IP address, or it could be the name of the device, it varies. SMB is for um, a router or a Windows uh, system like I have. Uh, so yeah, basically you want to change this line, your username, and your password if that applies. So moving on, um, it checks to see if there's any errors and logs an error if there is and lets you know that the mounting of the network volume has failed. If it succeeds, it moves on to steps three and steps four. These steps are basically identical. Each step is one folder that I want to copy into the destination drive. Step three is the backing up documents folder. And step four is backing up music. So this line is where the magic happens. Uh, you're going to say do shell script um, rsync because that's the program we're using. Negative AH, those are the parameters that affect the rsync command and this is your source directory, and this is your destination directory. It's important that you have this trailing slash on the source directory, because this tells the program to copy all the files within the documents folder, and put them in the documents folder in this location. If you remove this trailing slash, then it's going to copy the documents folder to the documents folder in your backup directory. And when you go to navigate there, you're going to see volume, system backup, documents, and then a second subfolder called documents. So just clean things up, 
put a trail and slash there. You want to change both of these lines, of course, to wherever you want um, your backup stored. The negative AH, the A parameter is archive, and what this tells the computer is to compare the, uh, the modified timestamps from everything in your source directory to everything in the destination directory. And if anything in the source is newer than the destination, i.e. you've modified a file, it's going to copy that file. And if they're the same, it's going to skip it to save time. The H stands for human readable, and it makes sure that any errors that crop up are in a human readable format, so you know what's going on. So this is step three back in our documents. Any errors are logged here, and that moves on to step four, backing up the music. And at the very end of the program, it checks to see if errors, the variable, is still equal to zero. And if it is, it knows that the entire process was completed just fine. And it tells you that. And if there were any errors, and it tells you that there were errors, and tells you to consult the log. And then the program ends. So we'll open up the log real quickly. And this log file shows you the time, the date that the backup was started, what SSID it read, and then it tells you the time that the backup, the document's backup started and the music backup started, and the time that it ended. Uh, this is all pretty simple because all these completed just fine. If there are any errors, they'll be deposited here under the uh, music backup or the document's backup part of the log. And this tells you that there's some sort of issue with a file. It looks like it cropped up once, but the issue never repeated itself. So it's probably just a one-time thing, and you can ignore it. So this is the backup script. Um, everything works, and it's provided in the description of the video, so I hope you use it and check it out. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to help you. And anyways, uh, good luck.